but also there's a hunger. There's a hunger in America, and uh, people yes. want to look at the darkness, but light shines the brightest in darkness. It is the oh, greatest absolutely. time for revival in America. It really oh, is. I now, I'm, I'm not oblivious to all the negative that's going on. Believe me, I'm not, but I, I preach a message the first of every year, the first Sunday of every year. I've done it for 35 years. And every Sunday, the first Sunday of every year, and the three points, accent the good, punctuate the excellent, and dismiss the bad. And so oh, we, choose to, we choose to accent the good, punctuate yeah. the excellent, and we recognize the bad, but we don't give the bad recognition. So we dismiss that and we accent the good. What can we wow. do to shine brighter when the darkness is here? And our team and our church people are just doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job of reaching out to their friends. And we're just seeing an incredible, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be Philip. I'm not trying to be boasting. I'm just bragging on no, Jesus and bragging, bragging on the and what God is doing. Well, a lot of pastors watch this program. And um, when, when we started, the reason why I began Daily Faith was, you know, we, all the church services that we normally had were canceled because of, sure. because of the pandemic. And uh, mm -hmm. my sons came to me and said, look, Dad, why don't you do an hour a day program to encourage people in this pandemic? And, and I looked at them and I says, are you out of your mind? An hour a day? Do you know how much time that will take out of my life every week? And they said, we just feel it's the Lord. And uh, my oldest son, who is our geek, uh, he went out and got stuff and set up a studio before I got a chance to say, really, finally, no. And sat me down in front of this table. And I have I have found a tremendous voice in what I'm doing. And we are reaching all kinds of folks, all kinds of people from all over the world that we would never have met in other ways. Pastors are coming on and in, being encouraged by being here, but also through their shared experience are giving out hope and comfort and, and, and authority for other pastors to say, well, if it can happen in Cape Girardeau, it can happen in, in Houston, Texas. There's no reason why God can't move with us. And if you're watching today, Pastor, listen to me. You have the greatest opportunity in your ministry's history to change people's lives in the storm we're in. The biggest church in the world the largest church in the world as far as across the country, not in a location, but across the country, is in China. While they are crucifying people, I mean killing the saints and putting folk in prison and reprogramming people, the church in communist China is growing in spite of it. And whatever happens in America, I'm telling you now, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, the councils of hell, will not prevail against it. And I believe that, as you're saying, Gary, that these are the moments that pastors should be looking at the harvest field and thinking, my gracious, this is the time to, to, to do something spectacular for the kingdom. Absolutely. Uh, God, God's name begins with go. So we, don't, <laughs> we, we can't sit around and watch what's going on. We, we've got to go with God. I, I love my favorite Reinhard Bonnke quote is uh, God goes with goers, but he doesn't sit with sitters. And so we have to, we have to position Ooh. ourselves and ask the question every day, God, what do you want us to do today? What's your plan? God always leads from the front. Our thing this year is we were born for such a time as this. Absolutely. We're, we're here on planet earth right now. So God wants to use us for the miracles that are being written in the chapters of history right now. Absolutely. And we're just, I mean, we're, we're not in a big city or anything like that. We're just trying to do something for Jesus. And if you, if you, if you lift that standard, if you, if you make that certain sound, if you blow the trumpet, I believe that there are mm -hmm. people that are in churches that are quitting and there are tremendous yeah. amounts of churches thinking, oh, there's no point. But if they hear of a church that's saying we are, we are full throat, we are going all out for this thing. They will come and say, well, if this is where the action is, I'm going to be part of what God is doing right here. And, and I, I've got a feeling talking to you today that you're one of those people that are out there saying, this is the way, let's get, let's get going. It's fabulous.